Hello and welcome to my third video in using Blender 3D. Today I'm going to be talking about adding objects to your scene. So without further ado, when Blender first starts, you have three objects in your scene. You have a cube, a lamp, and a camera. To delete an object, I can press either X, or I can press delete on my keyboard and that'll bring up the delete menu, and I can press delete. There we go. There is one more tool in your 3D viewport, and it's called the 3D cursor, and it looks like a little crosshair with a red and white circle with black lines. And if you left click anywhere in your 3D environment, uh, it'll place that 3D cursor where, wherever you click. It's also in 3D, so you can place it on your X and Y and Z axis, so you can put it anywhere in your 3D environment. And wherever the 3D cursor is, is where new objects will get placed in your scene. So it's important to know exactly where your 3D cursor is. So you have to look at the uh, your scene from both the for or at least from two different um, angles or two different views. I'm going to center my 3D viewport or my 3D cursor in my scene. So I'm going to press Shift C. And what Shift C does is it snaps your 3D cursor back to zero zero zero, and it also centers your 3D viewport on the object currently in your scene. So I'll press Shift C, and I put my 3D cursor at 000, and it kind of shifted my view so I can see all the objects that are in my scene, which is just my camera and my lamp. So to add an object, you can do one of two things. You can go to the Add menu and add an object this way, or you can press Shift A if your mouse is in the 3D viewport. So I'll press Shift A, and I'm going to add a mesh, and that mesh is going to be a UV sphere, which is a sphere, which is just like a ball. When you first add a mesh to a scene, you'll notice that it's made up of flat squares, um, and these are called polygons, which you've probably heard of before. And you'll also notice that in your tool shelf, you, you have a new section, um, and this is for editing the geometry of your object right away. There's a section for segments and for rings, and for the size of the object. So if I want to scale it right away, I can change the size. Um, and I can change the number of segments too, and the number of rings, which describe kind of the lines of longitude and the lines of latitude on the UV sphere. It's important to control the number of um, these polygons, because if you have too many polygons in your scene, uh, it'll slow down your computer, and it'll also take a lot longer to render. So I'll turn these down to both about 12. So I'll click on and type 12, and click and type 12, and press enter. There we go. So that's the bottom ball for my snowman. I might move it up a little bit. And now I could add a second UV sphere by going to add or using the add menu. But what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to duplicate the sphere I already have. So to duplicate an object, you have to have it selected. And you can press Shift D. And Shift D will do two things. It'll duplicate the object, so it's duplicated. And it also grabs it to your mouse, so it's the same as pressing the G key. So right now I'm not holding anything down, um, and the new duplicate UV sphere is attached to my mouse until I click to let go. But I want to quickly undo that, because I want to show you how to move the object just up and down. So I'm going to duplicate it um, for the first time again. And now if I press Z, it'll limit the motion to just the Z axis, so just up and down. There we go. So I'll click to let go, and I'll press S to scale, and I'll move down a little bit, and maybe a little bit bigger, and make the bottom one a little bit bigger as well. So again, Shift D to, to duplicate, and Z to limit the move to the uh, Z axis, and then S to scale, and move down a little bit more. Now, because I'm going to add an eyeball next, I'm going to put my mouse, uh, my 3D cursor right about there, and I'm going to press Shift A, add a new UV sphere, and turn the number of segments down to 12 again. Oops, 12 and 12. And I'm going to do uh, rotate first. If you look at a UV sphere, um, there are kind of concentric rings going around from the North Pole down to the equator. And these are going to come really handy when we're making an eyeball have a pupil. So if we want to turn just those um, polygons black, we can do that later on. So I'm going to press 3 to go to my side view. 
and R to rotate. Now I want to rotate it exactly 90 degrees. I could eyeball it, or I can press R and then press negative 9, 0. Now it's important to know that when you're looking at your view from the side, which way is the front of your snowman's head. You can kind of tell uh, because it plays a little like two frame animation um, when you switch between views using your keyboard shortcuts. So that's my front view and that's my side. And because it played a little kind of an animation between those two different views, I can tell that the left hand side of my snowman is actually the front. So I'm going to press S to scale that eyeball down to about the right size, about the size of a tennis ball. And if I move it from my front view, I can't control how front or close to me or far away from me that eyeball is, so I can't make it in front of the snowman, so I can't put it on the front of the face in other words. So I'm going to go to the side view and move it to the front of the snowman's head first, actually right about there. Go back to my front view and move it about to where I think it should go. I'll duplicate it and I'll press X to limit it to, limit it to the X axis and place it right about there. And there we go. I could duplicate these more and, sh and scale them. I could add buttons to my snowman and little pieces of charcoal for the, for the mouth, but I'm going to skip those steps. I'm going to go ahead and add an arm to my snowman. So I'm going to click on my mouse cursor here to place my 3D cursor right there. And press Shift A and add a cylinder. Now a cylinder has only vertices and radius and depth. Uh, for its options. Um, so I'm going to turn that down to about, or turn the vertices down rather, to about, mm, I'll say 12. And I'm going to press S to scale um, this and scale it way down to be about the right width or the right radius for my twig arms. There we go. Now there's two ways I can make this a longer kind of stick for the arms. I could use my scale gizmo and just drag up the blue handle. Or I could press S, which would normally scale uniformly, and then press Z, and that'll scale it only on the Z axis. So now I'm just making it taller. S and Z. There we go. That's about the right length. I want to add some fingers. So I'm going to duplicate that um, cylinder. There we go. And press S and Z to make it shorter. So it's about the right length of the finger. And I'll zoom in and place that with the G key and rotate it. There we go. I'll duplicate it, so Shift D and R to rotate and G to grab. And duplicate it again and rotate and kind of put it in place. Now I'm gonna rotate all these objects at once, so I need to select them all at once. There's a few ways of doing that. I'm gonna press, I could either have the first one selected and press or hold Shift down and now select the remaining ones, or I could press B, and that'll give me a crosshair kind of thing for my mouse, and I can box select, B stands for box select, all the objects I want to select. There we go. I'll press R to rotate, and G to grab, and now I'm going to duplicate the entire thing that I have selected, so I can just press D to do that, or Shift D rather, and R to rotate and G to grab and put into place. Well, the last thing I'm going to add, actually what I'll do is I'll add a top hat as well. So I'll press Shift A, a cylinder, scale it down to be about the right width, scale it on the Z axis a little bit so it's a little bit taller, and there we go. I'll duplicate that, scale it way down on the Z axis to make it really kind of thin like a pancake, and scale it uniformly so it's a little bit bigger and put it in place. I'm just going to press 3 to make sure it's in the right spot. I couldn't tell from the front view if it was way out here because of course it's orthographic. So I'm going to undo that. Control Z. There we go. Lastly, I'm going to add a um, carrot nose and that's going to be out of a cone. So I'm going to go to my side view by pressing 3 and put my 3D cursor right in front of the snowman's face. I can't tell how close or far away from, uh, from me that 3D cursor is, but that's okay for now. I'll press Shift A, add a mesh, that's a cone, and scale it down to be about the right radius, on the bottom anyways. 
and I might just drag this gizmo handle for scaling up. There we go. I'm going to press R, negative 90, to make it face forward, and G to put it in about the right spot from this angle. There we go. I'll press 1 again to get to my front view, and it's actually right in the middle just about, so I'll just press G and grab it and put it in the right, in the right spot. So again, I could add more objects to this. I could add um, other UV spheres, or actually Ico spheres, so I'll, I'll actually do that. Shift A. There is an icosphere. It looks kind of like a soccer ball. I'm going to scale that down. Uh, press 3 to go to the side and put it where, about where I think it should go. There we go. Go to my front view. There we go. And G to grab and put it. And I'll duplicate that a few more times. Actually, I'll put it right about there and duplicate it again. And duplicate that again. And there we go. Lastly, you're probably thinking to yourself, I don't want my snowman to look like it's from, well, or I don't want it to look like it's from the 1980s. Uh, in other words, it's, I don't want it to have all these kind of flat surfaces to it. So if I select one of these UV spheres, and I go over to my tool shelf, you'll find a section called shading. And shading is two objects, or two uh, options smooth and flat, and if I press smooth, it'll smooth the shading between all the different um, polygons. So I'll select the middle one and press smooth, and select this one and press smooth. It's important that you don't apply smooth to an object that has a hard edge to it. In other words, this cylinder, be just because we want to make it look smooth, if we apply smooth to it right now, it'll try to smooth the ones that should be smooth, in other words, all of the faces going around the hat, with the top of the hat as well, and that doesn't look very good. So I'm just going to leave it as flat for now. And that's my snowman. Thanks a lot. Um, if you like this video, please click the like button below the video, and have a good day.